What is going on guys? It is Michael from GPRisers.com back again in our mining bunker. And today we are going to get our NVIDIA holding rig up and running. So here we have two 3060s, a 3080 Ti and a 3080 LHR that we will throw on. Now we still have two uh, RTX 3070 Ti's and we still have three RTX 3090s um, that we do need to find a home for. These 3090s I will actually be putting on a new rig hopefully next week. Up here we actually have a couple 6600 XTs. We have a rig sitting and waiting uh, for, to load these up onto. So those will likely go on tomorrow. Um, we also here have, we got four of these in. Uh, RX 6600s. These are the non XT versions of those. Um, I want to do a little bit of testing on these before I dedicate a whole rig to it. So I will be loading up our AMD holding rig with these 6600s. But that said, I am happy to get these oddball cards put onto a rig. Finally, I have had these for a very long time. And also, as you can see here, uh, we do actually have a refresh of our four capacitor risers. Now we sell both of these in black and in the original white. Now, if you can notice, we did swap our logo on these. We did take out our uh, website that used to be on these. We started with our website, uh, but you know, our eight capacitors have this logo on it. So we wanted to include that on our four capacitors as well. Additionally, uh, these new refreshed four capacitor risers uh, do come with a 1X LED. The 1X LED is featured on our eight capacitor risers, but they are now available on our four capacitor. These, however, do not have the motherboard LED, but we are very happy with how they came out. And again, they are available in an all black model. But enough of that, we will be using our eight capacitor risers for our holding rigs, and we will be using our 18 AWG splitters. I do believe the 3080 Ti has three eight pins. I can't remember, it might have two. If it has three, then it's gonna have to have two dedicated coming from the power supply. And I know that these are pretty power hungry, so you wanna have at least two powering these. The 3080, I will actually be running off a single splitter as that will be consuming about 220 watts. And again, our splitter cables are 18 AWG. We have not had any issues pulling 220 watts through them. And also these 3060s uh, should be able to be powered just fine with a single eight pin. But enough of that, let's go ahead and get these on to our holding rig. I am gonna go ahead and take them out and show you guys the cards right here, right before I get them on there. So enough of that, let's go ahead and jump to it and get these taken out. All right, guys, we are back. I have got the 3060 Zotac out, the 3060 Asus Strix, which is still nice, not as nice as the 3080, 3090 counterparts, but um, still, I mean, probably the, the highest quality 3060 that you can get. We have the 3080 Ti EVGA for the Win 3, which just like its bigger brother, does have the three eight pins right there. So that will be one splitter powering these two, one splitter powering that, and also the riser. So there'll be two dedicated eight pins coming from the power supply to power this. And this is the Zotac 3080 LHR, which has two eight pins. Uh, these do pull about 220 watts, and I do feel comfortable uh, powering these with our 18 AWG splitter cables. And as I said before, we will be using our eight capacitor GPU risers. So these actually, I will be powering with a splitter cable as well. One splitter cable will power uh, this eight pin right there. So for these 3060s, they both have a single eight pin. I will be using one splitter cable uh, to power it one or one branch of the splitter cable to power it and the other branch will be powering the riser that it is sitting on. So that will be one eight pin, one eight pin, two eight pins and one eight pin. So that's one, two, three, four, five out of the six available eight pins that are found on the EVGA 1300 watt power supply. And I will actually be powering the riser for the 3080 LHR 
with a Molex connection. As you guys know, our GPU risers do utilize a side Molex connection. Um, and with the current wattage that these are pulling, I feel comfortable using a Molex connection. I have used a Molex connection for a long time on our test bench over there that has a 3090 on it. However, the actual draw from the, uh, the, the Molex connection is around 54 watts. That's what the software reads. And uh, we are going to be doing more testing on that. I did run the 3090 for, I want to say a month using a Molex connection. I was testing the heat all the time. The connection was fine, both on the riser and both on the power supply, but it was a single strand and only the one card on the test bench was being utilized with it. And actually, if you guys follow Red Fox Crypto, he did have this little tool um, from Elmore Labs. And we did just get this in and I will be doing a lot of testing with it. I'm not gonna put it all together here, but if you can see it right here, um, there's an input and an output and these are all eight pins. And what's cool about this board is you can connect a eight pin from here and then put it in here. And this is like a, a pass through. So instead of having an eight pin go directly into the GPU or the riser, you can have that eight pin go into the input and then it comes with additional eight pin wires here that go from the output to the card. And so you have this kind of as the pass through in the middle. And what's nice about that is there is a little screen here and it shows the actual wattage that's being pulled on a eight pin connection. So you'll be able to tell how much this eight pin is pulling, how much that eight pin is pulling, and also the six pin connector on the riser itself, you'll be able to see what is actually being pulled rather than just relying on a software reading. And obviously that's a very important um, number to know. You can't always trust software. I've seen some videos of uh, people hooking up power supplies to specific connections and everything. And it seems like that little tool that Red Fox Crypto had a video on uh, seems to you know, work very well. So I'm excited to do testing with that. We are actually going to be doing testing um, with um, probably every card that's out. We wanna know what kind of pull that those cards are getting um, from the PCIe slot so that the six pin or the Molex connection, we know how much wattage is being pulled from those. So we'll keep a data sheet somewhere on that, but that will all be for a different video. Uh, let me go ahead and get this plastic pulled off of these cards. I'm going to actually get the 3080 Ti hooked up first and the 3080. I'm gonna turn it on and just apply the uh, necessary overclocks for those as they are pretty beefy cards. Once those are mining and everything is fine and dandy, I will be adding the two 3060s over here and applying the overclocks for those cards. So that said, let me go ahead and get our 3080 LHR and 3080 Ti put onto our NVIDIA holding rig. All right, guys, as you can see, everything did not work as planned. And what I mean by that is uh, this thing will just not boot. It'll boot into minor stat, have some issues. It seems like there's motherboard issues going on with the CMOS. I'm not exactly sure what it is. Without any graphics cards, it seems to be booting just fine. Um, but as soon as I have these on there, we are having issues. Now it looks like we have a build date of May 3rd, 2017. So um, what I am actually going to do is I'm going to update the BIOS uh, before I do anything else. Um, I do want to just factory reset the BIOS as well. Uh, this is a mining motherboard, so it should work on all default settings. That said though, I am gonna go look for a BIOS update and I will be right back. All right guys, so as you can see here, we are currently flashing it. Um, the newest BIOS version they had um, is I believe a one in 2018. So it was a year newer. I'm not sure if that will make a difference, um, but I do have coffee ready to go because this is one of those times where it just does not work as planned. Over here, if you saw in the uh, video, I believe yesterday or the day before, uh, we got the 3070 Ti's up and it just worked flawlessly. Great, no issues. But then we have this. So I'm gonna go ahead, let this update. Um, I also am going to just reset the BIOS. I don't know what settings these came with um, when I got them. They were used boards. So I honestly should have done that um, right when I got them, but, but I didn't. So uh, we are doing that now, uh, crossing off all the possible issues that it could be. I'm hoping it's not a hardware issue. I'm hoping that everything is good to go. It seems like it. Like I said, Minerstat did boot up. Uh, but it was having some weird issues. I did reflash the SSD uh, twice. I did actually replace the SSD 
um, and, and nothing, nothing works. So um, we are doing this. So let's go ahead and click Y and we'll let this reboot. So um, once this gets back up, like I said, I am just going to go ahead and uh, reset the BIOS to factory defaults. Now it's blinking on and off. I'm guessing it is updating the BIOS. Now, like I said, we do have a updated build date for the BIOS. Um, I actually do believe um, it resets um, the BIOS when you update it. Yeah, let's go ahead and let it reboot. Now, if you did notice over here, I did put all four of the cards on. Um, there's this weird thing with NVIDIA. I'm still not sure exactly what it is. Um, but the weird thing with NVIDIA is sometimes like if you have one card or sometimes even two cards, it's it with some motherboards, it won't boot. Um, so you need to have a couple of them. Um, or I think none of them. Again, I'm not really sure why. I've never really actually looked into that. I probably should. Looks like minor stat actually is loading now. So I do need a smaller screen when doing uh, diagnostics like this. Um, I am planning on implementing all of that once I do get the you know little studio area over there. All right, so let me go ahead and see if this is showing up online um, i will be right back all right guys we are back and this rig is up and mining right now i went ahead and used the default settings uh, that miner stat has on their website for each graphics card um, as you can see here there are some issues with the 3080 ti it is getting locked and it's auto adjusting when it's not locked we are getting um you know i, I was actually getting close to 90 mega hash um, so I'm going to let that kind of even itself out, let the program do it. Uh, we are getting around 72.8 on the 3080 LHR, which is pretty good. I actually need to check my settings on my full 3080 um, LHR build. I do think I'm having issues on that one because of thermal throttling, but um, I will look into that with uh, some of the new settings I used on this one. But that said, I will uh, let this go for about another 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I will post a screenshot on this video of the settings that I'm using. Um, you can actually see right here, 81 and a half mega hash. Um, it might get locked again, unlock, lock, unlock until it finally reaches the right state. So I'm going to go ahead and get this screen out of here. Uh, like I said, I will put a screenshot right here on the screen so that you guys are able to see the overclocks that I'm using, the hash rate, the power consumption, everything like that. If you guys have more optimum settings than what you see here on the screen, please drop a comment down below. I'm super interested in seeing what you guys are using. It is kind of annoying having to set separate overclocks for each card, but that is exactly what this rig is meant for. This is supposed to be a troubleshooting rig, a holding rig, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is a Frankenstein rig if there ever was one. I guess the real Frankenstein ones are usually a mix between Nvidia and AMD, but, but I had some feeling that this would be problematic, but it's not that problematic. It's just not one setting for all and let it go in mine. That said, I am going to go ahead and disconnect um, the monitor and everything like that. I will perfect the overclocks on these or try to perfect the overclocks on these. But it seemed like it was the BIOS issue um, that was causing this. Uh, I did have a CMOS issue that, you know, kept popping up. Um, I think that's, you know, probably related to the battery. Uh, but it seemed like after I updated the BIOS and changed all that, I booted it back up, minor stat loaded, had some issues, I let it reboot itself, and then it started just fine. So the, of course, is the famous last words. Everything is fine now, won't have any issues. But that said, let me go ahead and get this monitor out of here, and uh, I will be right back. All right, guys, I am almost out of coffee, but it is completed. So I'm really not sure what I'm going to be doing with these cards. I don't really want any more 3080 Ti's. I don't really want any more 3080 LHR's. The 3060's, uh, I mean, if I get another couple of them, maybe, but um, I don't know. So drop a comment down below uh, with what you guys are mining on these cards. Right now they're just mining on Ethereum. I'm sure that that is probably not the best, uh, especially for these 3060s over here. Maybe even this 3080 Ti. Um, I have to go look at the profitability on these. Maybe Ravencoin's still up there. I'm really not sure, but I just wanted to get them up and going. The 3080 LHRs, if I can get them for you know close to cost, I will continue to try to get these. I mean, these this one's getting around 72 to 74 mega hash. So 
they are really solid cards for mining. Um, but you know, that said, uh, these 3070 Ti's actually are pretty close in price to the 3080 LHRs. They consume about 40 less watts, but they also mine 60 mega hash as compared to the 7274. Of course, the 3090s, um, I love these cards. They're always rock solid. Only problem is the thermal throttling issues. So I will get these going, as I said in the beginning of the video. Uh, these RX 6600 non-XTs I will get in our AMD holding rig. Not sure if I'm actually going to build out a rig of these or not. Uh, we have four, five, six, seven, eight of these RX 6600 XTs uh, right here. Those will be going in a 12 card frame. I plan on getting four more of these for that. But once that is done, uh, all of our cards will finally have a home. At that point, I will probably start moving over um, some of the other rigs that I have in my other location. Those rigs in that location are using residential rates. But actually, I am thinking of doing a RX 6800 XT rig. So I've actually uh, been eyeing the 6800 XTs for a while. Um, I used to be all AMD, and then once the 3000 series cards came out, I slowly started switching from AMD over to NVIDIA. But when you actually do a hash rate and wattage analysis, um, these cards are very close to the NVIDIA cards that are non-LHR. These are about 32 mega hash at about 70 watts. So if you double those numbers, that's about 64 mega hash at 144 watts or 140 watts and right, right in there. And the 3060 Ti's, 3070 non-LHR's at around 130 watts, sometimes 125 watts, get 62 mega hash. So they're very, very close. And I believe the 6800 XTs are also right there with them. So I want to not just expand, but also diversify. But I will keep you guys updated with all of that. Um, as you guys know, I am doing the business series. Um, by the time this is posted, I'm not sure which ones will be out yet, but it is also getting near the end of the year and I want to take advantage of any tax benefits that I can. It has been a profitable year in crypto mining. And although I do want to cash out on some of those gains, I also want to reinvest them. So if I'm going to do that, it probably should be sometime soon. So I am really thinking about doing the eight card 6800 XT rig here. Not in this exact frame. I don't know why I'm pointing at that, but it, it actually would be uh, that frame. So, but I will keep you guys updated with all of that. Uh, seems like, you know, decisions change day to day here at the mining bunker. As I'm walking by, I don't know why that has not been switched over to a two tier frame, but just a, another thing to do that is on the checklist here at the GPU risers mining bunker. We have got our box wall uh, that is expanding. I have this ladder uh, to be able to put them up there. You can see all those 1600 watt power supplies there. Um, I was going to put another rack there, but um, this is kind of where the studio area is going eventually. I keep talking about it, but, but just one thing at a time. But my main focus, of course, as you guys know, has been to get these cards that are sitting here waiting to mine up and online on a rig. So that is going to be everything, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate everyone that subscribes, everyone that likes and comments on our videos. We're having a fun time with this. It seems like we have a lot of late nights here, but it's been worth it. But as always, I hope everyone watching this has a great rest of their day and we'll see you guys tomorrow. tomorrow.